All right, so the information that I'm about to share with you guys is worth thousands of dollars. What's good, YouTube, and welcome back to another video. So today, I'm going to be telling you guys exactly how to build the perfect credit score. If you watched my last video, then you know I was teaching you five different ways to make money. The title was five different businesses to start, but on the path to making money, you need to build your credit score as well. Now, if you don't know the importance of having a good credit score, let me tell you exactly why it's a must in this world. Having a credit score is how you're going to be able to buy a house or a car in the future. So having a good credit score will allow you to get the lowest rates when you do so, which this means you save hundreds of dollars or even thousands of dollars depending on the loan amount. Having a good credit score is how I was able to get a 2.2% interest rate on my mortgage at the age of 20. All right, now before I tell you how to get a perfect credit score, let me tell you the range that's considered a perfect credit score. According to Credit Karma, an excellent credit score starts at 750. This means a person with a 750 credit score can lock in basically the same type of interest rate as somebody with an 850. This is because what really matters is being in that range because after you get to a certain point, that whole entire range is all considered to be the same. And like I said, this is the range of having an excellent credit score or you can say perfect credit score. All right, so the information that I'm about to share with you guys is worth thousands of dollars. So I simply just ask that you follow along and that you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And also share this with a friend or family to help them get a perfect credit score as well. Make sure you're not being stingy. All right, with that being said, let's get started. First, before you can get a perfect credit score, you need to understand exactly how the credit score grading system works. There are six different categories that you get graded on. First, I'm gonna go through all six of them. Then in the end, I'm gonna explain them. Those six categories are payment history, credit usage, credit aid, total accounts, hard increase, and derogatory marks. Now the derogatory marks are a little bonus. That might sound a little bit confusing, but I'll explain it at the end. All right, first of all, your payment history makes up 35% of your overall credit score. From the time that you get a credit card or any line of credit, anytime you make a payment on it, that all gets tracked every single month. So if you pay it on time, they would know. If you pay late, they would know. As long as you keep paying it on time and not being late, this is positive in your credit report, which means it increases your credit score. But if you're late even once, this will be very bad, which will drop your credit score. Now, the good news is anytime you make a minimum payment on your credit card, that is still considered an on-time payment. And a minimum payment is usually from $30 to $50. So worst case scenario, at least pay that off. I recommend you just have the minimum payment on auto pay. And the thing about late payments is they will stay in your credit report for up to seven years. But let me share with you a secret. The more line of credit you have, the less of an impact it will have on your credit score if you do miss a payment on one of those cards, which we get more into that later on. All right, the second thing that impacts your credit score the most is your credit usage, other words, credit utilization rate. This simply put means the amount of credit you have available to you versus the amount that you actually use, which that number should always be under 30% minimum. For even better results, it should be under 10%, but 30% is the max you should go. So if you have a thousand dollar credit, credit limit, you should never go for 30%, which is $300. The lower your utilization rate is, the faster your credit score goes up. All right, third, we have your credit aid, or you can call it your credit history. Now, lenders look at this for your average credit aid, not your oldest credit aid. So basically, when you get a credit card or any line of credit, that starts your credit aid. And let's say you go four years without opening a new line of credit, that means your average credit age is four years. But if you open a new line of credit now, and you open another one four years down the line, that means your average credit score will be now two years. That number will be divided. I'm not the best at explaining things, but I hope that makes sense. Basically, anytime you open a new line of credit, your credit age resets. The best thing to do is open up all your credit cards now so you can just wait and not do that in the future. And also never close any old accounts because this would clean out all your credit age from that credit card. All right, let's move on. The fourth one we have on the list is the type of credit. Lenders like to see different types of credit on your credit report. This is things like a credit card, a mortgage, and an auto loan. Those are all examples of different types of credit. So basically just get more different lines of credit. All right, moving on to number five. Number five is increase. Now there's two types of increase. There are soft increase and there are hard increase. Soft increase don't really affect your credit score. But hard increase do, these will temporarily negatively affect your credit score. The effect can sometimes last a few months and they completely fall off after two years. The thing that sucks is whether or not you got approved for what you apply for, it will still negatively affect your credit score. It can sometimes drop five to 50 points. Also, side note, be careful when you get auto loans from dealers. That's because the dealer's job is just to get you approved for the car that you want. So that means they will literally shop your credit score around to every single lender possible. And every single time any of those lenders run your credit score, this will keep dropping it. And they will keep doing this until you get approved for the loan. Each time they go to a new lender, that's another increase. Okay, now that we got all the basics out of the way, here's exactly what you need to do in order to get a perfect credit score. The first thing you need to do is check your credit score. Now, if you've never had a credit card or any line of credit, you will start off with no credit. You can use apps like Experian, Credit Karma, or Credit Sesame. Once you download those apps and make an account, it will show you where your credit score is at. Now, like I said, if you have no credit, it might be blank. Just quickly scroll through it to make sure you have no unauthorized increase on your credit report because maybe your parent got a loan in your name or something. That's not messed up, but some people do that. And the next simple step will be to get a credit card if you don't have one already. Credit cards are one of the easiest ways to build your credit score. And the thing about credit cards is the more you have, the faster they build your credit score. Think of it like this. If you have one credit card, it builds your credit score at a steady rate. But if you have two credit cards, it doubles that. If you got three, it triples that, so on and so forth. That's basically kind of how it works. The reason why this works like this is because each credit card payment is another on-time payment. So if you always pay your credit card off on time, after one year, that's 12 months of on-time payments. But if you have two credit cards, after one year, that's 24 months of on-time payments. And your on-time payments go through your payment history. And like I said in the beginning of the video, this affects 35% of your credit report. So I suggest a minimum of five credit cards.
cards. If you're thinking, how am I going to keep up with five different credit card payments? It's simple. Just create a folder on your phone for all your banks and always have it on auto pay for at least a minimum payment. Now, if you've never had a credit card, then you're going to start off with a secured credit card. This is usually what banks give to beginners. You basically put a deposit of $200 and they'll give you a credit limit of $200. After a few months of paying it off, they will up the credit limit and they will give you back your initial deposit. Or you can even download an app like Cell, which is an app that basically builds your credit from your debit card. All right, now that you have your first credit card, you're going to use this card for all your small purchases because remember, we want to keep this limit under 30%. If you're just starting off, your limit is probably going to be very small. So use that card for things like groceries and gas or any of the small bills. All right, the next step to getting an excellent credit score is my personal favorite, becoming an authorized user. Now, becoming an authorized user under somebody's credit card, this can potentially boost your credit score up to 100 points overnight. I personally have three members under my credit card. Of course, these are all family. So I recommend going to your mother or your father and asking if they could put you under their credit card as an authorized user. Once they do that, all their credit card payment history will be reported to yours. So if they open their credit card 10 years ago, you'll be given 10 years of payment history. But of course, if they have any late payments, that will be reported onto your credit score as well. So make sure you know this is a responsible person. All right, the third step, every three to six months, always ask for a credit limit increase. Asking for a credit limit increase will increase the initial credit limit that they gave you. All right, now let's move on to the next step, which is never missing a payment. Like I told y'all in the beginning, this is very, very, very important never ever you never want to miss a payment once again this goes with your payment history and your overall payment history is looked at as a percentage let me explain if you have one full year of payment history that is a hundred percent payment history but if you just miss one day that is about 90 percent payment history and for a good payment history they want you to be at bare minimum 98 percent so just missing one will drastically drastically hurt your credit score that's why i say at least have the minimum payment on auto pay and also having multiple credit cards help with this as well because if you had two credit cards then that's basically like 200 percent kind of sorta but if you miss one payment one of the credit cards you still have some leeway because you have another credit card all right let's move on to the next step and the next step will be disputing any collections you have in your credit report now this doesn't apply to anybody who just now getting a credit card basically people who are starting to build a credit score now well actually i don't know your situation so maybe you might have some collections but hopefully not but if you do just make sure to dispute them step number six or seven something like that do not close down any of your accounts now i do not recommend having store credit cards but if you do do not even close those credit cards out that's because if you close them out you lose all of that payment history you have built up all those years so I never ever recommend this. And then for the final step, use a platform like Self or Experian Boost. Like I told you guys earlier, Self builds your credit score with a debit card. The app Credit Sesame offers something like this as well. They basically charge a monthly fee of $25, something like that, and they report that as a payment to the credit bureaus. But you are still reimbursed back that money. And Experian Boost has a feature that can collect all your past bills and use that as payment history. So you literally get points for all the past bills that you already paid. And one more step, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos like this, videos on how to make money, different side hustles, different business ideas. You can watch me start a side hustles on this youtube channel i'm gonna be really transparent on how much money i make online so make sure you subscribe if you want to know that i'm still getting back into making youtube videos so i'm basically kind of new to this again but if you guys did enjoy this video drop the like down below for the youtube algorithm and comment down below what you want to see next i appreciate everybody for watching i'm out